Hello. Special thanks to Ona Saber for sponsoring a 90,000 subscriber lightsaber giveaway. All the details in the pinned comment down below. Our story begins decades before the fall of the High Republic. The planet of Doran was known for releasing Force-sensitive individuals, especially the type that the Jedi Order frequently accepted into their ranks. If these Force-sensitive individuals weren't brought to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, they were given over to the Barando Sages, which were a group of Force-sensitive priests who watched over the people of Doran. They had extreme weather patterns on their planet, and the Force was their guide to survival. When Plo Koon was born, he was immediately sent to the Jedi Order. His family had relatives who had been in the Order before, and so when Plo was born, his family knew he would likely be sent to Coruscant and away from their lives forever. This is where Plo Koon's journey began. As a youngling inside the Jedi Temple, he was trained the basics of the Force, and he got the joy of looking up to the Knights of the Republic. The Jedi at this time were under the leadership of Grand Masters Yoda, Praterviter, and Larum. Plo saw a number of faces join the High Council that would remain there for an elongated duration of time. After the other two Grand Masters perished, Master Yoda moved the position from Grand Master into a select role for one individual, himself at the moment. The other role in the Council was the Master of the Order. To Plo, all the changes within the realm of the High Council was fascinating, but his master assured him that the time to worry about such things would come. Master Travoka was a renowned Wookiee Jedi Master, and Plo Koon had the joy of being trained by him. Nothing during Plo's training would indicate that he would have any motivations to join the dark side. He was quiet, patient, and always listening. To many inside the council, they knew he would likely be within their ranks when the time was right. Plo was everything anyone ever needed in a Jedi. His nature was something that only few Jedi could ever possess, though it was only natural for him because of his lineage. Yoda had seen a number of Doran Jedi Masters on the High Council during his lifetime. As Plo Koon jumped into the rank of Jedi Knight, he was very quickly assigned on tasks around the galaxy. At this point, the Jedi had made the proposed changes to the Republic, so Plo was able to go out freely into the galaxy on his own without another Jedi. This was before the fall of the Starlight Beacon, and it was here where Plo had his first encounter with the Dark Side. It was a woman who was a descendant in the line of the Sith from Lord Bane. She was very enticed by this Doran Jedi. Plo was doing a mission on behalf of the Jedi and she introduced herself as her alter ego. Plo had no reason to believe she was affiliated with the Force, let alone the Dark Side. This individual would instigate conversations between herself and Plo that would show that he had a lot more lenience to the Dark Side than most Jedi. For Plo, it wasn't necessarily that he was supportive of it, but at this point in his life he had no real reason to despise it. Of course, the teachings inside the Order told him to dislike the Dark Side and reject it, but he himself had no personal vendetta against it. Nothing about the Alter personality would deride Plo from her presence. He continued to do his Jedi missions and the two of them became familiar with each other enough for her to inform him of her loyalties and where they lay. Plo didn't really care that much, and even suggested that he was interested in the slightest about the dark side. As a young Jedi Knight, it made sense to attempt to trust a Sith, and as he did, he was filled in with knowledge on the dark side. She helped him cultivate a power he'd never seen before and without centuries or even decades of life to support the notion that the light side was much more giving, he fell for it. As he began his learnings with her, he realized his position in life. He was informed about the rich history of the Sith and he adored it. His new passion for the dark side was fueled and his master helped him become more powerful than even he believed was possible. Plo was already destined for greatness because of his lineage, but now it seemed as if his destiny was changed for what he believed was his betterment. While Plo's master was adamant that Plo leave the Jedi Order, he told her that he had bigger plans for the Sith. She didn't quite understand and when he laid out his plans, she saw where he was going with it. For the two of them, it was mutually understood that Plo would never try and kill her. While the rule of two made sense, in some respect to Plo Koon, he was raised a Jedi and a piece of that remained within him. It was a very large piece of him because he told his master that he would not kill her. This, in his mind, wasn't a show of weakness, rather strength. To resist a pull to obtain power showed that there was a chance to continue learning for him. He saw his new master as a portal to knowledge, however she being from a legacy of Sith from the Rule of Two decided that he was far too weak to become a Sith Lord. Plo told her that he had no intentions of playing the game with her. If she wanted to kill him, then she would fail. Both of them knew this to be true. Plo was much more powerful than she was at this point. The reason he didn't kill her is because he believed that he could still learn from her. A ferocious duel did break out between the two of them, Master and Apprentice versus each other, and Plo Koon would beat her through a test of attrition. Though when he defeated his master, he told her that instead of dying, she would do what he asked. This was polite too. She would act as an advisor to him, and assist him in his continued knowledge of the Sith. 
Of course, being his master, this was such an aggressive attack against her legitimacy as a Sith Lord, but she was no longer that Sith Lord. It created a sense of tension between the two of them, and as Plo requested, she go out and get herself a student and train that student to be a new Sith. She's very opposed to the idea of doing this because it meant the rule of two was to be broken. But what could she do? She couldn't defeat him and she didn't necessarily want to die. Plo continued to show respect to her as if she was his master because he wanted to learn more about information surrounding the Sith and some of their greatest victories as well as their greatest failures. Though truthfully, his master, who was known as Lord Rune, was worried about her protege. If Plo was acting as an extension of the Jedi Order, then she would lose everything. So before she tried to kill her student, Lord Rune brought into her ranks another Sith, a child who she was naming Darth Tenebras. She needed someone for the Sith to continue through. When Plo beat her, she realized that it was a perfect decision to have Tenebras around, but now she had to train him to be stronger than Plo. Because Tenebras was already being trained, it didn't change the dynamic between Rune and Plo. While she was completely opposed to breaking the rule of two, she considered Tenebras more of her apprentice than Plo, but when Plo made it clear of his intentions to be the Dark Lord of the Sith, she realized he was going to break the rule of two. Now Plo Koon knew about Tenebras, and this forced Darth Rune to become stressed, though no harm would come to her and Plo was very adamant on that. Even though he beat her, he was very reliant on her approval which she typically gave out to him out of fear. His respect for her continued and he requested that she be the one to give him his Darth name. She initially refused the idea and then she gave in. Maybe Plo was being naive in his age, but he believed that she was waiting to give him the name because she didn't believe he was worthy of the title at the moment. While Tenebras had a solid name, Lord Rune believed that she could make a fool of her student by calling him Darth Morris. He never knew that by being called Morris, his master was calling him a moron. She believed he was dumb or just plainly naive. Of course, this wouldn't bite her in the back. Tenebra saw the name as degrading, but he respected that Plo wore the name with pride. Decades would pass and Plo would continue his stay inside the Jedi Order, training a student to the rank of Knight without informing the student of the dark side tendencies that he was being taught on the side. What made it better is the High Council saw Plo in the same respect that they had always seen him, one of a Jedi Master that garnered the attention of those around him with high regard. His place in the Order was one of pride and assertion, but not in the darkened way. Morris continued to serve with the Sith and after these decades passed by, he watched his master fall to a natural death. Lord Morris took the reins of Darth Tenebras and informed the young Sith that he was his apprentice. Much like Rune, Tenebras would attempt a coup against Plo, and it would fail magnificently. The Dark Lord of the Sith put Tenebras in his place and informed him of his motives and his goals. With Darth Rune out of the picture, Plo decided that the Jedi would fall through him. This was very confusing for Tenebras because his master was spending more time inside the Jedi Order than with him, but it was all a part of the plan. Tenebras wasn't filled in on really anything in regards to the plans of his master. All he was told was to go onto the galaxy, find a new student for the Sith Order. This of course confused Tenebras, but he listened intently. For Tenebras, he believed it was a way for him to team up on Morris openly. He could convince the student of his turn against Plo and kill him from being a danger to the survival of the Sith. Alas, Plo Koon wasn't concerned with this. He knew that the student of Rune would likely try and betray him, which is exactly what he was looking for. The whole purpose of finding a new student and training that student was for him to be able to take his new student and kill Tenebras. Of course, Plo assumed he could be wrong with the situation, but he trusted the dark side. If Tenebras betrayed him, he would at the very least have a new student who was already trained in the dark arts. Plo presumed that Tenebras would convince the Sith apprentice that he was the true Dark Lord of the Sith. And with such a presumption, Plo believed that if he killed the true Dark Lord of the Sith, he would prove to the Sith apprentice that Tenebras was nothing but a fluke and an individual who wanted to be someone when he could never be someone. The reason Plo trusted Tenebras with this arduous process is because he was going to get himself on the High Council inside the Jedi Order. Plo Koon had every intention of destroying the Jedi, but he would do it from the inside out. He wasn't exactly sure how he would do it yet, because it was a plan that was in consistent development. The plan would continue for the next several decades. Tenebras would bring in a Sith named Plagueis and begin teaching him the ways of the dark side. Plagueis had no knowledge of Lord Morris, and it was intended to be that way. Plo continued to evade his apprentice and Plagueis. 
They kept in contact about the continual progression of the plan, but aside from that there was nothing else. Tenebros believed he was going to make use of Darth Rune's titling of Morris, but he would be mistaken. Plo Koon, while inside the Jedi Order, trained his student to the rank of knighthood, and he continued to work dedicatedly inside the Jedi Temple until he was welcomed into the High Council itself. Plo was able to focus now on destroying the Jedi Order. It was a slow progression, and it would work to perfection. He had time to do so, and so he knew that he would outlive Tenebras anyways. As the years crept by, it became even more obvious. Tenebras wasn't ever going to stand the test of time, but he believed he would. Tenebras told Plagueis that they were going to kill a Jedi Master in the High Council. The way it was described to Plagueis is that the Jedi Master had learned about their existence and he needed to be dealt with. When they approached the true Sith Lord, they were completely shocked by what they came across. Lord Morris knew it was coming, so he gave his apprentice a layup. He told him where to be at what time and be ready for the next phase of the plan. The way Plo situated the meetup was to make Tenebras feel confident in the attack. Plo made sure Tenebras knew to bring Plagueis along. When the two Sith apprentices showed up, Plo was waiting. The Lord of Morons, as Lord Rune believed him to be, waited for Tenebras and his apprentice. When they arrived in the lair, they attacked. Both Sith igniting their weapons and Plo didn't do anything but stand. He had no fear for them. He was a Sith Lord, a master of the Sith. Plo used the Force and stopped Plagueis with the Force before ducking and weaving out of the way. Tenebras didn't realize what was happening in the moment. He swung viciously at his master, and Plo didn't even try and ignite his lightsaber. Plo moved and ducked out of the way, avoiding every strike from his former student, while Plagueis watched in disbelief, unable to move. He didn't realize the Jedi were so strong with the Force. Plagueis didn't even know that Plo was a Sith Lord, especially because there wasn't an ignition of a lightsaber to prove that he had a crimson blade. Tenebras got angrier and angrier, his rage consumed him, and all Plo could do was mock him. Tenebras slashed his blade down, and Plo ignited a crimson blade and blocked the strike. The shock on both Tenebras' and Plagueis' face were all too perfect. Of course, for Tenebras, his fear shot through him, but for Plagueis, he saw that there was a true Dark Lord of the Sith, and it wasn't his master. Plo slammed his blade upwards and threw Tenebras off his feet and the Sith Apprentice fell to the ground and looked over at his master. He tried to apologize, but Plo's blade had already extinguished, and he looked down at his apprentice. Plo laughed to himself before igniting a red lightning from his fingertips onto Tenebras' body. He couldn't do anything but cry out in agony for several minutes until he died. His body was burnt to a crisp, and Morris looked over at Plagueis and told him that he had two choices. Plo released the Force from his grip on Plagueis and looked at Plagueis and told him to make that choice. The irony is, Plo didn't list the options, he just told Plagueis to choose one. But being that Plagueis was a Sith, he knew what to do, and immediately, he fell to his knees and pledged his loyalty to Plo. Plagueis also apologized, being that he never learned of his existence, and Plo silenced him. He told Plagueis that it was intentional, not by his own intention, because Tenebras feared him, and never wanted Plagueis to know about it. Plagueis was outraged that his master had lied to him and expressed his fondness for Morris. Plo dismissed the pleasantries and told Plagueis, that he had a mission for him, and he wanted him to follow these steps to precision. Plagueis was quick to listen and took all of them into his mind and listened intently. Morris dismissed his student, and he returned to the Jedi Council to continue his legacy. He was consistently doing everything he could to undermine the Jedi. He taught classes for younglings and instated thoughts of grandeur, and threw all their teachings to the side. All this was done so meticulously and cautiously. All the while, Plagueis returned to an alter ego of Hego Damas II and became the face of a banking empire. There was an incredible cash flow, and similarly to Tenebras, Plo told Plagueis to take in a student of his own and continue to cultivate the minds of the young from the dark side. Plagueis listened, and he made sure that every single student that he brought into the dark side was well aware of his own master. Plagueis would bring into the picture Darth Sidious, who became a prominent senator from the planet of Naboo. At the same time, Sidious went to Dathomir, and with the help of Plagueis and Morris, they killed every single Night Sister and threatened Mother Talzin and Old Daka. Essentially, Sidious wanted to take a student from the Night Sister clan, but Mother Talzin was very hesitant to give him over. Because of her hesitancy, Sidious brought two of his masters to help. Instead of just taking one of the brothers, they took all three, Maul, Savage, and Feral. Morris instructed the Sith to teach them in the Acolytes for their order, break them in the perfect assassins. While Plagueis was well aware of the rule of two, he didn't care for him, especially after the death of Tenebras. Plo continued his stay inside the Jedi High Council and waited for the opportunity to strike. During this, he was given proposals by Sidious and Plagueis about what they could do to take down the Jedi Order and take over the galaxy. 
While Sinise's plans was fascinating, Plo wasn't on board with simply taking control over the Senate and slowly forming it into an empire. It was a slow burn, and it would take longer than Plo was looking for. But in all honesty, Plo sat in the High Council for nearly a century, and Grandmaster Yoda hadn't died yet, so maybe it would be better to just go on to some new grand plan. Good thing for Plo, he'd been preparing for several backup plans in case the first one didn't go through. So he collected Sidious, Plagueis, and himself to discuss their plans. Sidious wanted to engulf the entire galaxy in a galactic war, which sounded fantastic. It reminded him of the time when the Sith were actually an empire, but something he didn't agree with was the strategy itself. Sidious suggested that he become the Chancellor of the Republic, and while that was a fine motivation, that wouldn't be worth their time. Instead of playing the slow brooding approach, they needed to show strength. If they could destroy the Jedi, that's all that mattered. A galactic level war would work. If they killed Yoda, then Plo would become the interim Grand Master, likely, and he could push for new change within the Order. Of course, he'd been cultivating the minds of the High Council for decades, and he had them all in his pocket. Not to mention, Plo sparred with each and every single one of them. The irony is, it wasn't Yoda he scared him the most, it was Windu. Yoda was skilled from centuries of work. While Plo had himself a Jedi lightsaber and a Sith lightsaber, he got to understand the styles of each of his peers. The ones who showed the most strength against him were Mace Windu, Yoda, and Kiati Mundi. Though Mundi's skill with the lightsaber was impressive, Plo believed it wouldn't be a struggle once he actually used the dark side. These spars for Plo were more or less him getting a feel for his adversaries without using the dark side. Windu's use of Shatterpoint and Fapad were an issue, but Yoda, on the other hand, could be bested. Over the years, Plo lost a number of spars to the Grand Master. But during one of the sessions, he was able to beat the Grand Master and he learned how to do it. Yoda had a weakness for an elongated session. For Plo, it would be a battle of attrition. When he returned to his Sith, he informed them that he had pondered on their individual progress. Plagueis was continuing to delve further into the darkness. However, Plo suggested that Plagueis should not try and use the dark side to create life. Sidious was on board with Plagueis, but it was completely halted by Morris. He told them that through his lessons with both the Jedi and the Sith, he learned that to control the Force was something that could not be done. Morris, despite his name, understood that if Plagueis tried to create life, then he would create a being that would become more powerful than anyone. Plagueis was insistent that they could control that power, but it was quickly dismissed because without control over the whole process, how could one potentially know where that being was being born? They wouldn't, which meant he or she would go to the Jedi and become their tool. And while Plo was in the Order, there was no guarantee that they could control him or her. He told the two of them to leave it alone and continue their focus elsewhere. Though, there was better news for Morris. They found a man, someone who had been raised as a Jedi, who found interest in plans to leave the Jedi Order. His name was Dooku, and Morris simply acknowledged that he was put on by Plo Koon. He was one of another dozen Jedi Masters with incredible potential who had been cultivating the dark side within themselves for years. Plo believed in the Sith Order, loyal to him, and him alone. He saw flaws with the Sith and their ways of life, but for instance, if he was too afraid to trust that they could grow, then why should the Sith even exist? Morris felt the Sith Order would survive best through a chain that was initially started by Sidious. He made a notion to a galactic scale war, which was perfect. However, giving the Republic a way to win was not. They would devise a council of systems to unite against the threat and take the fight to them. The next step came from Plagueis and Palpatine. They had to unite all the corporations that funneled money into the Republic, use them as construct armies of battle droids, and take it from there. Once the Republic was engulfed in war, Morris would lead the Council out into a place to meet for diplomacy. This is where they should pounce. Morris, Plagueis, Sidious, Maul, Savage, and Feral. Once they got rid of the Council, Plo would return to the Jedi Order and remove them from their solitude and put them out in the open where they could kill each and every single one of them. It seemed like a terrific plan, and it would have to be put to action. Over the following years, Plagueis would be tempted to create life, but he never would, because he didn't want to get on his master's bad side. Initially, Plagueis completely feared his master, but as the years developed, he began to respect his master and the vision he had. Sidious, on the other hand, was disenchanted with the idea, and while Plo had his suspicions, he could never be 100% certain that it was the case. He could only assume that either Sidious was planning something, or it was just him being superstitious but in reality, he knew Sidious was preparing something for him. Plo continued to cultivate the minds of the High Council, and during these years, he had the distinct honor of bringing a child into the Jedi Order. He knew she was special, and he believed she would have a role in the future of the Sith Order. She could become an apprentice or just simply an acolyte. Whichever, Ahsoka would make a fine Sith. Plo by this point could see how things were going, and despite the fact that Palpatine was making a move for the role of Supreme Chancellor, he wasn't letting anyone know that the Sith returned. The corporate armies and fleets were massive, however there was no one that knew about them. 
the Jedi were blind, sitting idle in their tower on Coruscant. Plo hated that they didn't have the will to challenge the status quo. They simply allowed their galaxy to fall out from under them. It was easier for the Sith, but it kind of annoyed him. He wanted a challenge. Well, he got a challenge. His suspicions were coming true about Palpatine, which made the long-term plan about the Sith fall through. Palpatine was a masterful duelist and he would be necessary for a fight against the Council. Instead, Palpatine had been going behind the backs of Morris and Plagueis. When he became Supreme Chancellor, he wanted to celebrate with his fellow Sith. It was supposed to show the Sith that they had all won and secured themselves a bright future. Plo saw it this way too. It was a secured future and with Palpatine as Chancellor, it would be better for the Sith. Lord Morris completely flipped the script on Palpatine and supported his disillusioned plan. He was so supportive that Palpatine was able to get the Dark Lord of the Sith to fall into a drunken stupor. When Morris was unable to clearly walk, let alone stand, he was taken back to Sidious's bed to try and lay down. As Morris laid down, he slammed into the bed, so out of odds with the alcohol flowing through his system. Sidious saw his opportunity and ignited the lightsaber into the chest of Plo Koon. For Sidious, everything stood still for a moment. He felt a rush of heat crawl up his spine, and his face filled with the sheer amount of terror. Sidious looked at the body of Plo Koon and it vanished. Sticking out from his chest was a crimson blade. Plo turned Sidious around and lashed onto his face, digging his nails into Sidious's jaw. He asked if he really believed he could be deceived. Sidious didn't really understand, but it was as simple as a good old force projection. Sidious would have never thought about it, and Morris knew it. Palpatine had a slight ego problem, and because he would see his moment as one of his greatest accomplishments, there was nothing that could stop him from succeeding, which is why he fell for it. When that didn't happen, he was shocked. It was also what revealed a short moment of touch between the two of them that Sidious was hiding things from his allies. Plo could feel this when he grabbed Sidious's face. The grasp wasn't just a physical one, but a forceful one. He used a force to probe Palpatine's mind, and the reason it was so easily done was because Palpatine was busy feeling shocked that he was betrayed. Morris kept Sidious alive for a short while before electrocuting him into a state of painful death. It was a remarkable feeling for Morris, and while Plagueis was witness to it, so were Maul, Feral, and Savage. Plo reminded him that he was the Sith Lord, and while he understood the determination, the lust, and the drive for greater power, they had to be more mature than that. It sounded like he was talking down to a band of children, but that's how he regarded them. He then told the three Zabrax to go to Kamino and destroy everything, make the Kaminoans go extinct. While the three brothers disappeared to Kamino, Plagueis would be instructed to bring Dooku into their ranks. In the following days, Dooku would be brought into the Sith Order. Without a death of Qui-Gon, he wasn't as influenced, and when the time came for him to turn to the dark side, he rejected it. Of course, with Jedi Master Yaddle present from the High Council, he felt confident enough to challenge Darth Plagueis to a fight to the death. Little did Yaddle realize that one of her council members picked up on the scent of her following Dooku and traced her to the industrial sector. Truthfully, Plo didn't like the industrial sector, and he always tried to stay away from it. Plagueis was 50-50 on the whole thing, but he was here because Dooku was expecting to meet Sidious. It kind of hurt the whole turning to the dark side thing for Dooku anyways. Plo watched from the exterior as the adult and Dooku challenged Plagueis in a fight to the death. Plagueis was an accomplished duelist, and against the likes of Yaddle, he wasn't having too much of a struggle. Her powers were great, but her style meshed really badly against someone like Plagueis. She would have had a lot more luck against Sidious. Dooku, on the other hand, was a generational talent and everyone knew it. There were few who could fight like Dooku, and once it became clear which side he chose, Plo waited for Plagueis to make the kill. Though the Jedi were relentless, and they fought harder than even Plagueis could handle. He was able to hold his own, but it became very evident very quickly that he couldn't. Plo decided that he would save the student, but punish him for his inability to innovate in a moment of need. When Plo arrived, the Jedi saw him as their assistants. He would help them destroy the Sith. Plo ignited the blue lightsaber, which really threw Plagueis for a spin. This was intentional. Morris needed his student to look bewildered. It would make the betrayal of the Jedi even better. As the three Jedi moved in, Yaddle was dropped to the ground, and Dooku turned around at the last second, and Morris ran his blade through Dooku's chest and shoved him with so much force he was lifted off the ground and into the wall. Dooku's shock wore so much confusion. Plo extinguished the blade and laughed it off. He then turned to Plagueis and told him that his failure was punishable and Plagueis would undergo several minutes of torture before being released and told to clean up the mess. Plo felt he could no longer trust his Sith. He realized that the key to a strong Sith Order was an inverse version of the Jedi Order. Teach them the ways of the Sith, but make it as subservient and as loyal to the Sith Lord as possible. To continuously try and kill each other would only make their power fall away from them. Lord Morris decided they could push back the plan some more, especially since without Palpatine, 
Republic descended into chaos. Plagueis came in clutch here because he suggested to the Republic that they buy into the corporate structure so they could secure more futures for themselves, which ended up working really well. Plo decided that as a new Chancellor was being selected to unleash the corporate armies onto the Mid Rim. The Outer Rim wasn't of any concern to anyone, so it didn't really matter. With the Republic under attack, Plo Koon, Oberan Cesis, and Yari Alpuf were sent to investigate. Plo would seize the opportunity to wipe out two council members who had served alongside Yoda since the High Republic. The council could tell something was wrong, and Plo reported that there was a return of the Sith. The council did exactly what he hoped they would do, nothing. Plagueis, on the other hand, was able to take advantage of the seeds left behind by Morris. A number of Jedi Masters would leave the Order. One of them was supposed to be Dooku, but Plagueis took advantage of the new rise in their ranks. Plo knew one obstacle that stood in his way, and it was Grandmaster Yoda. Once he killed Yoda, he could take command over everything, and while he believed his previous plan wouldn't work, he could simply single out Grandmaster Yoda and kill him. This would promote him to Grandmaster as well, and the rest would be history from there. Plo had his reservations about the entire thing, but it all went just as he wanted. Plo showed up and had every single former Jedi, he turned to the dark side, watch, and had Plagueis, Maul, Savage, and Feral there too. Yoda got to watch as his top masters from around the order that weren't on the High Council supported a Jedi who rose to the High Council with the aspirations of destroying the Jedi Order. Nothing but betrayal sat in Yoda's mind as he was swept by Master Plo. Yoda knew all of Plo Koon's moves, but as it turns out, those moves didn't belong to a Sith, they belonged to a Jedi. Once Morris used the dark side, it was over for Yoda, and he was executed. Plo had all the Jedi here because he wanted to show them why they should join, and much like Plagueis, they knew that they would be joining the Sith Order with complete loyalty to the man who single-handedly killed one of the greatest Jedi the Order had ever seen. It was really a terrible thing to see, and Plo returned to the Council using a bit of Force and a bit of Force magic he learned from slaughtering the wretched witches on Dathomir against the Council. He used the Force and magic to show that he'd been badly injured during the fight and that he wouldn't be able to survive if it wasn't for Yoda. The Council bought it, and decided that he, as the eldest and the survivor of these fights, become the Grand Master. The Council didn't see past the irony of it, plus some of the Jedi who hadn't fully committed to the dark side replaced Oppo, Yaddle, Yoda, and Nariel. There were now five whole members on the High Council who supported a coup of the Jedi Order to some extent. By the time Yoda died, the galaxy had changed so much under the attacks from the corporate alliances. The Jedi had been fighting alongside the Republic and lost a number of their members. The local militias couldn't legitimately stand up against the might of these corporations. As they moved closer to the core, Plo relocated the Order from Coruscant to a planet full of trees, far away from everything on Osis. It was so far away that it would make sense for the Jedi, but when their transports landed, they were ambushed. The corporate battle droids were programmed to hunt and kill adults and leave the younglings behind. They were for the future. There was no point in senseless killing, even in the eyes of Morris, but Plagueis did agree. He believed in Plo's plan. The Jedi were slaughtered and those who weren't killed ran away into the tree lines and disappeared. A transport did try and escape Osis, but it was destroyed by a Lucre Hulk that was just placed outside the planet. With the Jedi seemingly wiped from the galaxy aside from the couple younglings, Plo told the corporate alliances to go to the Mustafar system so they could finalize their dealings. Maul, Savage, and Feral were also sent to Mustafar as well. The corporate council was never seen from again. But before they died, Morris made sure all emergency control of their organizations fell onto him. Plagueis, on the other hand, took a transport of younglings to Exegol, so they could begin their training and turn to the dark side. Plo spent some time on Osis trying to have a voice of help for the younglings, or Jedi still out in the forest. And one night, he found the girl he was hoping would join his ranks. She was scared and she was looking for the man who brought her to the Order. He told her that he could take her somewhere safe. She trusted him. Ahsoka would be brought to Exegol with Plo. When they arrived, she could see that some of her peers were already slaughtered. Plagueis had one rule. If they stayed in the light, they died. It was as simple as that. They were given a choice. If they became Sith, they lived. If not, they were of no use to them. It was a simple system and it worked really well for the Sith. Ahsoka realized that the man she trusted wasn't actually a good person, as she believed he was, and she was then promptly killed by Jedi Master Plo Koon, or now Lord Morris. It brought great shame to him. She would have made a fine counterpart, but not everything goes that way. Lord Morris returned to the fleet and led them on a pursuit of the core. The war itself got more tense in the core, but once planets were getting completely leveled, members of the Republic renounced their support for him. 
Lo used tactics of total war and his newest and most powerful acolytes against civilians. Savage, Feral, and Maul all led assaults, and a number of corrupted Jedi Masters did the same. After another year, the galaxy would look on in terror as the rise of the new Sith Lord came in. In the past, there were just Jedi to bring hope to the galaxy. While the Jedi had suffered through a lot, there wasn't more than a dozen Jedi left in the galaxy. Didn't matter who, they were all slaughtered and it was intended this way. Plagueis admired his master and wished for this to continue for him. He was able to change the entire game for the Sith. If it wasn't for Morris, they'd be lost in the depths of history, and now they were creating it. Morris wasn't finished, and he didn't intend on it. He very intentionally avoided messing with the Force. He made sure no one else did either, and he didn't even go as far as cloning. Morris accepted that he would die one day, and he didn't fear death. The only thing he wanted was for the Sith Order to outlast the galaxy, and so he set up how he wanted it to run. He used Exegol as a staging ground for this, most specifically because only a true Sith could find it, and even more than that, only a true Sith could understand. If someone was brought to Exegol that either left a Sith of Lord Morris, or they died. There was no in between. What Plo did was establish a hierarchy. Sure, there could be fighting, but never in between the lower level Sith and the upper level Sith. Sith Lords did not become Sith Lords by fighting with each other. They got there through sheer mastery of the Force, and understanding of what they were supposed to do to the collective Sith Empire. When Plo died, his order had around 500 members, and Plagueis, Maul, Feral, and Savage were all remaining Sith Lords. They had a legacy to uphold, and each of them knew that if they didn't fulfill that legacy, then they would fail not just Lord Morris, but their order. While the galaxy was reduced to servitude, and the legacy of the Jedi all but gone, the Sith had their chance to make their mark on their very own galaxy. And that, my friends, is our story. Again, special thanks to Galvin Gaming, Tristan, Darth Revan, Pimp Daddy Bane, The Last Jedi, Apollo, WeeWoo670, RiRi700, Ozzy Tano, The Eternal Padawan, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Mad Maddie Studios, Anakin003, Fordo's Legacy Star Wars, Lemon Knight, Rex the Wolf, the man with three first names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing for supporting the channel. If you want that list to get longer, go check out the Patreon. There's other cool things on the Patreon, like the Sith Clone Wars, or what if the Sith return during the Clone Wars. Yeah, that, that's being worked on right now. Uh, there's updates for that all the time on there. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoyed, smash the like button. Anyways, let's talk the story real quick. I wanted Plo Koon to have a different kind of vibe to his whole story. It's not quite as cynical as the Satine Sith Lord one, and it's not quite the same as the Padme Sith Lord one. But this one, I really felt like the irony in the name Morris, which comes from the Latin term moron, like that that whole, like the irony there is kind of like what I was going for. Is like, he's considered a moron, and he kind of plays everybody, and his entire life is literally just playing everybody. I'm not gonna lie, it was also kind of fun having somebody that wasn't Palpatine as the main villain, having Plagueis kind of hang around with him. Kind of fun. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed it. I love you all. Spread the love. And always, my, my friends, may the Force be with you.